Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Camille. And this is our show about anything and everything off road. We are we are still socially distanced, except you guys are both on the East Coast, and I'm out here in the Midwest by myself. Ross yes. is holding a finger in the air like he needs to pause for a no, second. No, I had an idea for a sticker, but no, Camille and I have actually met in person, which is more than we can say about most of Many our times. guests and also ourselves. I was so. gonna say you and I have never physically been in the same place. We just happen to no. hang out on the internet. Yes, <laughs> Chris, you're not missing much. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks, buddy. I will go censor myself. Like four feet tall in real life, dude. I am not, and I'm shorter than. Actually, no, you've seen me since I had back surgery, so I'm at my, you know, my fighting stature, which he's still don't growing. Fight. So, you think that fighting else, stature. Dude? Gotta drink that milk. <laughs> oh, we talk about that a lot at our house too. Drink your milk. Anyway, um, <laughs> big milk, man. That's that's big milk propaganda. Is it, yeah. Right, let's move on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going nowhere really fast. Ross, I live in a place. Audience. Yeah, I live in a place <laughs> where they have front license plates that say "Eat Beef." I love the "Eat More Chicken" ads. I gotta say, it's they're so funny. Also. Welcome to the Off the Topic Again podcast. <laughs> By the way, I have been told for $5 I can go get my own Eat Beef license plate if I want one for the front of the store. $5? Suburban. Yeah, you just go down to the Livestock Exchange and you can buy one for, or Livestock Association, and you can get one for oh, five bucks. not like a DMV. No, 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 no. Oh. It's just a five, it's a front plate. Like, we don't have front plates here, so like you can have a front plate that says Eat Beef, Kansas Livestock Association, mm. I believe, so. Well, do you guys have front do you from place it at the livestock exchange, which is just a whole separate topic that we can go into here? Yeah, which of your livestock do you have to exchange for the license plate? <laughs> you, you no, you get I you get it from the I, livestock I, association, which is located in the old livestock shirt. exchange building. <laughs> There's a place called the West Bottoms. It's where they used to keep all the cows before they were headed to the slaughterhouses. Oh, sad. Yeah, it's, like the it's not really that sad. Except it's animals. Yeah. Get it. No. Massachusetts has front plates, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. There used to be a. It, it, it's a relatively recent law, from like I guess, nineteen nineties, where they made the front plate mandatory. But mm -hmm. if you had that single plate that was a different style and color, that was rear only plate, and you could keep that plate and keep transferring to the to your new cars. So as you know. You could, Yes, so so people are not giving them up so they can have no front plate on their cars, and it, it's a it's a whole license plates are crazy here in in, in New England. Um, they are, yeah, they are. I but, uh... but yet having no having the old green Massachusetts plate is like a, a super uh, mass old status. Oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a uh, I'm not that's like a stand your ground. God, right, take, and you're not supposed to. You're it. not supposed to um, re renew them. Like you're not supposed to repaint them if the paint fades. It. They just expect you to turn them in and get new yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. Guess what people do? It's like, oh, they do. It's yeah, still pleasurable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is America. We don't actually follow the rules. We just bend them to our will. It's. it's I was driving with my daughter uh, home from school today, and I said, "Hey, look! Everybody's honking at this guy because the light turned yellow, and he actually stopped." Uh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here uh, a light turning yellow is either indication to floor it for most people, or stand on the brakes like you're stopping to not run over a child. <laughs> yeah. There's no so in between, this, right? So, so this guy stopped at five thirty in the afternoon in downtown Boston at a yellow light. That's so remarkable. Yeah, this is this is why you know road rage exists. In in New York, you get a five count after the light turns red, and it's still yeah. There's at least four to six more cars that will make their way through. That's actually oh, it's yeah. funny you're talking about that. Like we're going through a evolution of driving style here because we're as a metro area, we're we're divided by a state line. So there's Kansas City, Missouri, and Kansas City, Kansas on the other side. Mm -hmm. But there's been such an influx of population here, not nearly what it is in like Austin or the other like popular cities in the Midwest. But mm -hmm. we've had so many people move here that the driving styles have changed where it used to be the speed limit was exactly five over or you were immediately pulled over. Yeah. That is not the case anymore. It has been well, wild to watch it happen. 
there's also the COVID effect. And I, I know we've talked about this and I know other podcasts and people have talked about this endlessly, but driving during COVID was kind of lawless. Mm -hmm. You could basically drive however you wanted at any speed you wanted and be fine. And there was it's no one else in the road because uh, yeah, exactly. My, I mean, at one point my, you know, 20 minute commute had turned into like a six minute commute. Um, <laughs> So normal time it should take you to drive between those two destinations. <laughs> yeah, without traffic, I guess, without, <laughs> yeah. without you know, civilians. Um, but people are still kind of getting themselves together to reacclimate yeah. to the ways of societal driving. So, but you know, I, I got a story for you. So, you know, how you said, you know, you don't get pulled over unless you're doing something stupid or you're doing like 15 or 20 above the limit. So my friend's daughter, who's I think uh, 19, got a speeding ticket the other day on, uh, it's called Mass Pike. Oh, yeah. Good old well, Mass Pike. Yes. She was doing 70 in a 65. Really? And what What does she drive? A Volvo. A white Volvo. That's just bad luck. That's... No, no, it's, it's not bad luck. There was more going on that she neglected to tell her father about. Oh. And was still trying to figure out exactly what happened with that so, so the, the, five, the, the, the ticket for five over was a goodwill gesture on part of the cop ah hmm. she wasn't so, actually don't know. clocked at, she she she, um, she, she she used her uh, fifth amendment right against her father um you know she, she remained silent and she lawyered up against him basically I love I love this because wow. Camille's just guaranteeing that he has to come back on the show to wrap up this story in the future. Yeah, when's the statute <laughs> limitations up on this? this? I don't think we're ever going to find out what God happened. Damn, but... dude! Also, though, seventy on the Mass Pike is like dangerously slow for the at least in Western Massachusetts. If you're let's doing just seventy, say she wasn't going. Let's just say she wasn't going seventy. Dude, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, the Mass Pike is an interesting experience because it. It's one of those highways that changes so it's like a dichotomy in in absolute polarity between western mass and where it ends in eastern mass, you know, from like the country to like yeah, it's getting to be kind of met, like city based and people drive completely differently, but the speed limit is the same. Yeah. So Speaking of driving in certain roads, what road would you actually choose to drive the Colorado ZR2 on? Ooh, that is a great question. Because um, we know it marked your driveway. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a pre-pro. The one that I saw at a, a 2023, 2024, I, I don't know of him, but um, the new Colorado ZR2, the third gen Colorado. And it looks awesome. There's no denying that. Um, I don't think it was a pre-production vehicle, but I do think it was not a very early build, like before they were actually producing them for consumer hands. And it may or may not have um, left its mark on my driveway. Leaks of oil. <laughs> Leaks of things, which, you know, again, it's an early model. It's an early truck. It's a press vehicle that had 45 or 4,000 or 4,500 miles on it, which it, multiply it so, by you know, a lot. Seven, ten. Yeah. And the skid plate was bashed in, so who knows what life it lived before it, it was in my hands. It it took a flight. It took a flight. It saw some shit, <laughs> probably. Um, yeah. I would choose to drive a Colorado ZR2 on a an unrestricted fire road would be perfect for it. Because it kind of thrives when you're just fucking ragging on it. It's, you know, it's um it's not happy. Like it's fine around town, it does its thing. Um and it's uh, Chris has shown a picture now of of the U-Haul trailer that I had hooked up to it with the <laughs> Polaris scrambler that uh that oh, sadly goes back in a couple weeks. But yeah, the the U-Haul trailer that I had behind it is twenty three hundred pounds, and the quads nine hundred pounds. So nine hundred pounds dry with fluids. We're probably like close to thirty five hundred pounds with all the you know the shit that I have on the quad. Um, but it wasn't 
happy with like 3,500 pounds of weight behind it. So. It is a cool looking truck. I like the awesome. way that they look. The the 6th gen Camaro styling has really done Chevy's aesthetics department good, like well upon them. Um, it looks great. Like it, it really, it has a presence. It actually, it doesn't have dick wheels, which is nice. So, <laughs> which is the canyon, right? No, no. Well, yes, but also others. So, what you know, I the only time I saw this new, new, new track was at the New York Auto Show, which you missed um, this year. I did, and Sad. I sat in it and I started looking around the interior. There's one thing that was painfully missing. Headlight switch. I know it was the switch for the headlights. Yeah. It so they exist. So it, that's like such a tricky thing because they say that they're doing it so that it can be included in the technology because everybody wants technology. So it's on the screen. It's a permanent click on the top of the center screen. They're doing it to say five cents, not to include it. Exactly. That lower <laughs> dash panel, if they don't have to mold in the cutout for the headlight switch and they don't have to include the headlight switch and the wiring and you know all the controls behind it, um, it saves them money. And it is, I, I only noticed it when I went to turn on the fog lights and I was fumbling around underneath. I was like, oh, wait, shit, there, I have to go in and click and touch and do, you know. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's in this screen? It's, it's all in the screen. Yeah. Which, I mean, we're all of, you know, the same mindset like we're not there's a huge disparity between what the automakers think people want and what people actually want and we saw that with like the current gti golf r you know the volkswagen debacle um you guys switch gear you mean yeah you guys want physical things to turn things on and off in a truck i do (laughs) yeah in in a in a truck Especially, um, you want something where you can have gloves on and and do it, and and not have to like think about where you're clicking. And anyways, um, yeah, the Colorado ZR2. We'll talk about it more next week, I think. But it uh, it looks fucking awesome. I will say it does that. look good. And I I and especially in like that desert yellow that or whatever that yellow and the blue that they have. Man, it looks so good. Like, oh, man, I, I wish I knew we talked about we were we were going to talk about this size pickup. So you know what I drove over the summer, and because I'm a loser, I still neglected to write this up. It's a European site of the new Ford Ranger. Oh, really? Yes. The new one. So the new one. That's and, interesting and, because it's actually with, new with a diesel engine. One of the two diesel engines. Which one? I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> great, show. Are, great show. <laughs> right hand drive, left hand drive. Paint us a picture here. Okay. Um, Chris, if you go to my Twitter feed, I stopped posting on Twitter, you will find pictures of it there. Oh, it's man. Twitter? Yes, I, I, I quit it. I know. But <sighs> you'll find pictures of it if you go scroll to my timeline from like uh, August. It's, it's like yellowy orange thing going on. Um, it had the weaker of the two diesel engines. It had a 10-speed transmission. Uh, it's a lot like the old I've got to be honest with you. The interior is better. It had a really cool uh, roll-up cargo cover. I'm going to write about this mm-hmm. because the interesting part about it is that they built the same vehicle for, for a global market mm-hmm. as opposed to having a, 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 you know, a continent-specific vehicles. So you're going to have this in Australia, in That's how... North and South America, and in Europe. That's how we got um, our current Ranger, which I specifically remember getting into with you at the New York Auto Show in like 2018 or 17 and looking at each other and being like, not good. This feels like it's 2009. Like, they're, they're, this because is just bad. Because, it, yeah, because it was probably 2017 or 18 and the truck launched in 2011. Yeah. Um, yes. But this one. It, it was a lot like it, but the interior, they, they, it wasn't like a revolution. It was more of an evolution. Uh, the diesel engine, I love diesels. I didn't like it. 
Um, really? Is it it's, turbo? Turbo diesel or just yes. an ice? Okay. Yeah, diesel is turbo now. Yeah. What <laughs> didn't you um, like? You could ask me if it's carburetor or not. Um, yes, it's it's a it's a turbo diesel, but it 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 had torque, but it wasn't. It didn't have the guts that I expected. So like, if you ever drove the the old Grand Cherokee diesel or or one oh, of the three liter diesels, eco diesel. Yeah, those things hold ass. That one didn't. Love that engine. You love it until you own it with like 80,000 miles on it. Oh, yeah, that's why I don't own one. I've been looking at used ones. There, don't there do things, that to yourself. There's things you can do. We had this um, conversation offline. Yes. There's things you the can do I... that are called extended warranties. None. Even that is not going to help you. you got to do some borderline illegal shit. Um, Depends what state you live in. Okay, so this is these are federal. Federal. Hold on. So these are pictures of the truck that you yes. So actually drove. Yes. So see the bed cover. No, because it, I... it, it's a power cover that rolls up. That was really cool. That's uh, actually pretty cool. That's like straight out of the Rivian textbook. Or yeah, very much so. The old that. Rivian textbook, because that's not something they sell anymore. Oh yeah. So inside you see basically you know the the, the design language of modern Ford. Uh, with the big vertical screen. It's a mock e screen. Uh, yeah. Um, it had a volume knob and a, two, and a tune knob, I think. The little circle are over there. Guy in the middle. Uh, I think that's temperature in the middle. I don't well, uh, like, vol- Volume's in the middle, and then it's dual climate control. Yes. Look at you. Yeah, so it didn't have a tune knob, hmm. uh, which I sometimes like. Uh, I listen to a lot of satellite radio, and sometimes you just want to one station over uh, but that's just me but yeah, it was it was it was a pretty cool truck uh it was huge truck this was in poland so it looked it looked bigger than anything else around it's um, a full-size truck in poland absolutely <laughs> yeah. but people still don't get it it's like why are you driving a farm vehicle and i'm like no 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 this is four cars in a row this is a luxury car it's yeah. got leather heated sun you know sun roofs and all this other stuff it's a five passenger vehicle um it's a it's a big sedan it's a pickup truck it's a it's a tow truck it's, it's a an vehicle. off-roader yeah it's an off-road it, it and it's it's a comfortable cruiser it, it, it does everything and this is why pickup trucks are sloppy. yep so it's a very misunderstood segment both here and elsewhere if you but not in australia you know australia they get it yeah if you know it you know it and that's why there's so many repeat buyers uh, yeah, it, but it, it looks was, it was a great truck. Ex- well, not exactly, but almost identical to the outgoing one. I was I was hoping for a Raptor, but they didn't have one. Ooh, the the Raptor. The problem with the Raptor is that you, like, yeah, you gain all this amazing capability and performance and whatnot, but you lose like one of the best things driving this Colorado zero two for a week. I can park it in normal parking spots in the city that I live in. And it's not, you know, like unusably wide and like a terrible thing to spend time in um, because it inconveniences everybody. And like, it makes opening a door to take a child out terrible. But once you go to like the wide body trucks, you have to think about things differently. But bro, dude, this is still a Ranger. So even yeah. as a Raptor, it's narrower than Hold the on. I have to, I am going in my Ford. Uh, well, <laughs> you Googling? I am I'm using the Google. Ford Ranger like, FX4 like four. with. So an FX4 is 71 point and, uh, no. Uh, yeah, seventy three point seventy three point three. Let's note that. And a Ranger Raptor seventy nine inches. So, so I mean, hey, five inches is a big difference. Yeah, but it's only two point five inches per side. Chris, in the Northeast, two and a half. Yeah, I live in truck country. I have no like. Difference. I'm like. This the, the the funny thing to me is the Ranger Raptor. That's the same width as the truck. Sequoia, right? No, the the Sequoia, a full oh. size <laughs> Toyota product, is eighty inches wide. Oh, somebody in 
my city just or they have probably had it the whole time but i just started seeing around they have a prior a second gen trd pro sequoia nice <laughs> it's it's that dark green it's very pretty oh um, fuck that's the one to get did you like my dumb uh concept or Sequen- I did yesterday Sequendra. Sequendra. <laughs> sometime i go I, I said that there will be three or pickup trucks at some point there, are there the definitely will. i mean hennessy's doing it which means other people who um, have like less credibility are doing it are you it's, guys forgetting uh, centurions exist uh that sounds like a uh a uh, creature with a head on something that a uh, human head. Also, I'm, did you I'm know the tr- Ranger Raptor is four hundred pounds? I mean, the Ranger Raptor is fifty four hundred pounds. So it weighs as much as a suburban. So this is a. F- it's oh, a thousand man. pounds more than an FX four. Here, here comes the Centurion. A thousand, one thousand pounds more than an FX four. It's a lot of muscle they put in it. I love those things. So these oh, are these are F three fifties with the body closed in on the back. Yeah. Yep. I just needed to be yep. a Toyota product so I can have all the same reliability I have my other side. Sorry. Uh, the the impetus for this is the suburban's been acting up lately and it's driving me fucking nuts. But the Centurions have existed for a long time. Like that Yeah. It it does exist. It's um it's a second gen square. You have it. No, no I need is, more cargo space what's, behind the third row what's seat. What's surprising is, is how long it took the automotive manufacturers to realize that there's this big niche in the market that has only the Suburban in it in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Like four-door full-size SUV. Like, it's, it's a crazy. And now they're all Tahoe-based. I just need... I, I want a Se- Sequoia XL. Just give me... Whatever the difference yeah, is, give um, me 18 more inches at the back Jeep, of the truck. Jeep's got you covered. Yeah. I saw After, wagon See, I said today. I wanted my Toyota reliability still. There. I was blasting up the Merritt Parkway in the Chevy Trax all-wheel drive RS, and I saw a Wagoneer get on in front of me, and the back of that thing is just blocky as blocky gets. It was black, and it had the there's usually like chrome trim around the window, and there's yeah, usually like I, a chrome plate. I don't like them. And I that think was they look all horrible. Blacked out, and the only thing that was chrome was Wagoneer across the back, and yeah. it looked fucking terrible. And like, I like the Wagoneer. I had a great time in the Wagoneer that I that they loaned me, um, and it had the best stereo of any vehicle I've ever driven. They are comfortable. Oh, it was, it was the second best highway cruiser of any vehicle that I've. Ever what's driven. Your number one. Huh? What's your number one? A couple the weeks ago. Suburban yeah, diesel. Suburban <laughs> high country with the three little three liter Duramax was the best. It was just like another level. But I also have a you know, this is opinion based and I, I, I that. love that three liter diesel. So they just introduced much. an updated suburban today. Saw that. Yeah. yeah. The, and the and the diesel gets another thirty five pound feet of torque. Which it didn't need, but it's awesome See, the front, that it the has. Front of the of the that's the Wagoneer L, which I mean that is right. literally the size of the New York City, you know, newcomer apartment. Yeah, that see that, but, but that's this that. is where I have to live with so many damn kids, which is again my fault. I get it, that, but like the Ford Expedition Max gets close. Because it's a little but longer, she, but, but then you have that. to deal with EcoBoost air ride. Right. Like I'm not. I just the Sequoia works. It just needs another ten to fifteen cubic feet of space in the back of it. Yeah, well, that's so, why you have. Speaking, that's, this, this this just hit me from two summers ago. I'm at a beach here in uh, um, Massachusetts, and um, like a Ram Dually pulls up. Uh, uh, you know the four door crew cab or whatever they call it. The mm-hmm. And the bed, because the dually was prepared for a, for a gooseneck or a fifth wheel trailer. Yep, fifth wheel. But, but behind the cab, in the bed was like a cab extension. So the mother and the father get out from the front. Three kids get out from the, you know, the back seat. Mm-hmm. And then 
out of that little extension behind the cab, two more kids get out. Now, I don't know if this is a Southern or a Midwestern thing. It's both. But that blew my mind. Yeah, it's it's also so, a great way for a whole bunch of people to die if you had an accident. Listen, <laughs> Practice Jesus will say that. Common sense doesn't Sorry, apply. I didn't, you know? just, to, I didn't need to go there. My bad. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying it was eye-opening for me. Yeah, uh, that's that's how I ended up with my. I can't even find the photo of it anymore. Like, why can't I find the photo of your, of your of own vehicle? Of my dumb concept thing that I made. Oh, it's in the Hooniverse chat in the Slacky. Yeah, Here, I, I finally got thing. it. Um, it is not. I am not good at Photoshop. I will 100 percent admit that. It looks like something that would have sold for about thirty five grand over during the COVID boom on Cars and Bids. Not Barrett Jackson. Not Barrett Jackson. <laughs> and, you say, and you say you're not good at Photoshop. This is a oh, I'm not. My favorite part is I was able to make sure that I could still see the trees through both sections of rear windows on the Sequoia as well. Um, I'm proud of myself for my Microsoft Paint work. So let's uh, yeah. keep those egos in check. Camille, a lot of my issue is the so this is only, and this is where it becomes uh, interesting. Is you this has to be a double cab, not the Crew Max cab on the Tundra, because if you go with the Crew Max, the bed is so short on the back of the truck that the then rear door of the Sequoia doesn't fit in front of the tire. Hmm. Like, if you're doing all this, why don't you just extend the wheelbase? I'm not doing any of this. I don't have any money or really, fabrication you a, skills. You have a plan. No, I'm just going to buy another dumb Suburban because nobody else will make one that's more reliable. Like, I, I, I swear to God, if they built this like a Sequoia XL, I'd place the order immediately. So the biggest vehicles you can buy that are sub commercial sub 2500 grade are the suburban and the Ford Expedition Max Ford, the Expedition Max to think of outside the box Wagoneer yeah. L Wagoneer nope, L nope, yeah nope, if you have an nope, extra nope, 50 nope. grand What's the, I want to know what Camille's going to say nope. I'm going to say a, a four wheel drive van Yeah the transit comes in all wheel drive the Sprinter <laughs> Let's just uh, say I've spent a lot of time. Chris worked for one of those companies. Like this I, is I spent a lot of time in transit. Yeah. I the drivability of the suburban size is so much better. And I drove mid roofs. I drove high roofs. Um, you off road by drivability. So I live in Kansas where wind is an issue. Okay. Specifically crosswind, because for whatever reason, when you're driving I-70, the wind's either out of the north or the south, which means it's blowing across the road constantly. And I drove, specifically, I drove uh, frequently, um, we call them ELs or extra long. So it was the extended rear of the van with the dually rear axle. And it was okay. But man, if that wind was blowing some enough, you'd be like, a gust would put you in the left lane. We just had Chris from you join on. Yeah. You could make it into a Ninja Turtles band. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody's done Ninja Turtles yet. So. I don't. I That, I, that, 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 that wasn't on my podcast bingo for tonight. Ninja Turtles band reference? No. no. <laughs> yeah. uh, I played with those toys. I remember those things. Oh, oh, I, I watched that band. show. Um, I had the van. The van was badass. It was. Oh where, my gosh! Where are, we, where are we going from Ninja Turtles van? Uh, I was gonna say, what's next on your path? Uh, so I I did take a trip in the suburban. Ooh, I went out yeah. and back Chris to adventuring. Yeah, I I went and got snowy. Um, I I, I Peter uh, Clark from Baseline Overland. He and I uh, got together out in in Boulder. Basically, I drove to Peter's house. Actually, um, so he. To back up, Chris, usually you tell me when you're going on any kind of trip like this or yeah. when there's some kind of vehicular project involved. <laughs> and I just got the it snowed the whole time yeah. message afterwards. I forgot to, forgot to give Ross the update that where yeah. I was headed. So <laughs> yeah. So the way the, the way out Colorado's. Yeah, the way out wasn't too bad. So in 30, 37 hours total, I went out and back. 
Um, this was the way out. And this is because you can never get like the feel of this, but the snow is blowing across the road. Um, I will it's shout out pretty and scary. Yeah, it was gorgeous. But I, to be honest, it wasn't really that scary because what have I just put on the Suburban it was a set of brand new Michelin's Defender oh, LTX yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. MS twos. Um, are they they're three I, peak tires? They I don't know three? that I've seen the three peak on it. I don't. I don't think I've seen the actual icon, but it's the M S M and S stands for yeah, mud and snow. Yeah. Um, Fair point. That doesn't mean they're three peak rated. Correct. I don't I think, think I. I need to go back also, and double check. The Dura tracks I had weren't three peak rated, and they were the best tires I've ever run in the snow. <laughs> so now they actually make all season three peak tires, like passenger car <sighs> tires. All season or no yeah. season? The Michelin Cross Climate Two is one of those. Yeah, my parents well, run those on their uh, ascent. Those are such a great car. Yeah, so so Chris got some tires from Michelin, and and as you were saying, you were not worried. Well, I part of it is also is the weight of the suburban. Can, can I raise my hand here for a second? Yeah, you were saying you're driving through snow. Can you go back to the picture? <laughs> that this one's is, not the snowy one. This is dusting. <laughs> that was when he yes. left his house. Like maybe that, this is a geographical thing, but they wouldn't call the snow here. This would be just like flurries, right? And that, but that was at eighty miles an hour. Oh, uh, there's pictures coming that'll tell different stories. Yeah, this is so headed out eventually. And the reason I took that photo is because the road was basically clear. Like it was, the, I wasn't risking anything to take a photo while I was driving. Mm. Um, later though, the left lane became snow packed. The right lane was the only open lane. Uh, there were a couple, three times where I then moved out into the left lane to go around slower semi. So we're only doing like 45, 50. Um, and dude, those tires were great at no, awesome. I, it's a re normally a rear wheel drive truck, right? Uh, and I I ran it in um, your four high, four auto. four A, yeah, four, four A, auto. yeah, four yeah, auto. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Was, to Chevy stands for all wheel it's, drive. It's um, it's automatic. It's it's rear wheel drive with like a little bit of sensing front going is, on to the front, and then yeah. as soon as the back slips, it's center differential. Yeah. Yes, uh, um, kind of. Yeah, I will find yeah. you. It is. But by the time I got out to Denver, Camille, the like it was, going, but there were there were three inches on the ground by the time we got there. When we woke up the next morning, there were six inches. Um, nice. Yeah, and That's I <laughs> the, the the weird part about when it snows here heavy, you have to worry about things being closed. When I woke up and I was like, "Oh man, there's five six inches of snow on the ground." Like I was kind of worried about like the coffee shop being closed. No, everybody there is oh, up. Wow. They've gone to work. Like. They it was fine. I did get. It's like, it's like they've to. seen snow before. Yeah, and and <laughs> regularly, I I used to. Um, there was I for a while years ago when I was still teaching middle school. I was thinking about going to like live up over the front range from Colorado Springs, and I asked him about snow days, and he goes, "It had to be more than a foot after midnight to cancel school." Hardcore. If we got like, snow, I don't think we've got <laughs> a foot of snow here. So right. Like, I'm okay right. with no snow on the ground as long as I can ski. Yeah, right. you're one of those. You're one of those. Yeah. So but yeah, those those tires are fucking awesome. Um, my brother and I drove my dad's 2500 out to Pennsylvania and back on Friday uh, with those same tires, and they are. You can't hear them, which no. No road nose you know, whatsoever. And they track great and they like coast beautifully. But, They're awesome. But they look like ordinary tires. They do Correct. look like ordinary tires. There's a thread, and Chris and I have talked about this. There's a thread on I Hate Mud that is like the Michelin LTX MS2 is all the all terrain tire that almost everybody needs. 100%. And it's not really an all terrain tire. Hurt. Is if I were to classify things the way I classify things, but it's it's doing the job. You, it's it's the end all deal of of highway. I mean, I mean, um, all if you go into weathers. tire rack, did, did I mention I was geeking out on tires a lot lately? And I'll tell you why later. <clears throat> but if you go into tire rack oh, now and you select categories, 
they give you all terrain on road. They, give they you do. Terrain off road. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the difference that you're drawing right there. Yeah. They, the same for the, for the it's, a, it's weird. Earlier. Like, because BF Gurdish has like four different all terrain tires. There's like the trail terrain and KO2 and KO3. Uh, KO3, allegedly. Um, it doesn't exist. On the Raptor. It it does exist in some instances where they want it's in two sizes with OEM only. They never issued yeah. a press release for it. I asked them about it, and they're like, oh, we don't have anything to say about the KO3. Love the people at BF Goodrich, but it's like, yeah. come on. Um, I have a set of KO2s coming, which I know I'm very, very late to the party. But I inquired about KO3s and it was like, mom, like, no. Yep. Like, so again, I've been cross shopping a lot. And one thing I noticed here's what would happen. You know, we said we're going to talk about my Land Cruiser Prada that I just sold. Yes. <laughs> just, that was like, that was a month ago already. Something like that. I mean, it's time. Who's coming? <clears throat> um, one of one of the things I hate I didn't like about it, not hate it, I didn't like about it was the ride. And I realized where I went wrong. I went with the KO tire. It's a horrible thing. What load of range? <laughs> it's the so, first one I got to. <laughs> so what so you lifted it a little bit on what, like Iron Man? Uh no, this was an Iron Man four by four, yes. Okay. And so, so so two things. What load range were the tires? That's where I messed up. Because the size I needed only came in load E. Yeah, yeah that's... Really so, this, the only really bad roads here where I live, and I went cheap on the shocks. I didn't get the, 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 the higher up Iron mm -hmm. 4 by 4 shock. You went, uh, so, not Foam Cell Pro, but you went um, Nitro something. So, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, the combination of the stiffer strings, the heavier tires, yeah. and not enough shock. Right. I did not like the ride of it. People forget people in the off road world who are just looking for a tire and they go to like 285 70 17, which is like the most standardized yep. tire size in the off road world. Um, they forget that the sidewall of the tire also serves as supplemental suspension. Yep. You know, you have the seat, you have the, the body and the chassis and how all of that in, works together in the suspension. And then you have the tire. And the, the tire actually the, helps absorb things, but E-rated tires. The defense. What's the first thing that hits a pothole? It's not tires. your shock, it's yeah. your seat, it's not your spring. It's and your tire. I don't know, what ply were the... Were, they were KO2s, right? They, so they, they were... were KO2s, low, low E, I think they were probably six, six or eight six, ply. Six or okay. eight ply. Yeah, so the... Uh, but my defense is two two seventy five seventy seventeen are all, they're only offering low E. That's a, for KOTs. An, an yes. ab, that's an abnormal size in general, though. Yes, but had I gone size bigger, it it would be rubbing a lot. Had I gone size smaller, it would have left a little. Pinky. I should have went size smaller. Let's be honest. But, yeah, I mean uh, it wouldn't be this cool. My 285, my Toyo ET3s are low E, and they're amazing tires. I, I don't doubt that I could get 60,000 miles out of them, but they have no pliability. So I have the load C on the Bronco, relatively the same size vehicle, just a little bit heavier probably. They ride great, and they're, they're, they're 285s. They're 33 inch versus 32 inch, and I have no complaints. Mm -hmm. um, those are the the battle tires. Oh yeah, and you had, you had the same wheels as me, but in black. Yeah, much which are cooler. Than black. They're great wheels. They're like twenty four and a half, twenty five pounds a wheel, which is very light. Really um, can we talk? So, Chris, Chris, if you go into my Instagram, you'll see like the latest and greatest pictures of it. So your uh. When I was selling the it. listing, no, no, you go, just go to my Instagram site, and there's like ten pictures that I posted. But there's like the last two pictures that I took of it. 
What Sorry. was the uh, the final straw? There wasn't. So I bought it with the idea of keeping it for about a year. Because oh, really? I knew that, yes, because I knew that after a, after a year, my daughter was going to have a permit, which she does. Mm. Um, and I didn't want her learning the behavior of, of driving a right-hand drive car because there's really no purpose for it. Right. It's one of the first things you said. Congratulations to her for her purpose. Thanks. Um, and condolences to see you for your nerves. Start. I'll let it slip. So. <laughs> I went to this one earlier. They were cropped. That These ones. Yeah, okay. that, that's, that's Instagram just messing things up. Yeah, I agree with that. But you didn't post them on threads. I deleted my threads account. Already? Stories are really still a thing. <laughs> uh, where was it's it going right. this? Can, I don't know. You made me log back into the Twitter for the first time in like six I weeks. Want, <laughs> I want the product over here. So, so, yes, I knew my daughter was going to drive. I know I didn't want her driving on the right-hand side. But also, you know what I what I didn't like? is if I, When I was daily driving it, if somebody was to hit me, tap me, I would have to go searching the world literally for like a bumper cover. Oh yeah. Okay. If I had a, if I, if I had a crack in the windshield, I would have to import a windshield from Australia probably. But or something like this. At least that you, was stressing me out. At least you had that. When I had the Via Cross, well, I, somebody almost hit me like broadside, and I was like, like there are literally no body panels left. It's like a DeLorean, like. Like somebody bought stock, they put it on a shelf, and then once it's gone, it's gone. that's it. You you're like paying to mold your own panels. So I'm a big fan of owning cars that I don't care too much about, or that if cars get broken, I can just repair easily. And this was none of these things. I cared about it. Yeah. I, loved, I loved it, and I knew that if if something got broken, it would be a challenging thing to fix it. So okay, I knew it was gonna sell after a year, so it had to go. Okay, so you did well upon your promise to yourself then. Uh, do we want to talk about what might be next and if it's a Forerunner with body <laughs> kit and a GX front how, end? How long is the show? How much time do you have? Uh, I was going to say, I'm going to go ahead and pull up all of our text chain Slack channel. Like, Dude, there's so many I conversations. I have a lot of friends <laughs> who send texts and pictures of shit they might buy, but you have sent some really like out there stuff over the last few weeks. And I know you were in okay. I know what could possibly go wrong with a two thousand and three G five hundred that had five owners? Uh probably less than the forerunner you sent a couple days ago. Was that the one with the Lexus front end? Yes. Yes. I'd say a G five hundred the twenty year old G five hundred is less likely to be problematic. G five hundred has a hundred and eighty five thousand miles on it. Oh, gosh. And it's been parked for the last four years. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly Is that go an wrong? actual link to that one? Or you just, I feel like you took a screenshot. It was like, why I'm not going to go to the G Wagon route. Oh, so that I was doing research on the G Wagon route. And the guy is like, oh, it's a very great track. Everything is good on it. Except sometimes it does weird things. Like when I take the ignition key, up, key off, the engine will still keep running. Just weird things like that. So, I'm an electrical engineer. I, I can, I can, sort of in my mind think that I can address some of these things, but another part of me is like I don't even want to bother. So th this guy who's selling this G500 that I just mentioned, I said, is there anything wrong with it? And he's like, yes, the seat only moves forward, but it doesn't go backward. Yes, 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 yes. So what's my question? How do you know it doesn't go backwards? Because it doesn't go backwards. So how do you move it back? How far forward has it gotten? That, like before he no understands it doesn't go backwards. <laughs> it goes backwards, but only if you press one of the presets that is preset on the seat being back. So it's a switch. What? That's the problem. problem. Yes, yeah. that's relatively. It's assuming you can get the parts, and assuming the wiring is viable, like that's pretty minimal as far as things Another go. Another problem, he says, the sunroof doesn't open. Okay, I can live with that. And the third problem, he says, the AC What year was this? 2003. Okay, the AC doesn't work. I know a guy who can help you with that. That guy's me. You you can do AC? I he it might be a day job thing. Might I might work for a company that 
sells products that what color was this thing like i'm just trying to get us a representative image those those, um there's homie wait did i can share a screen over here there's a guy Uh, in bedford so i drive through the town of bedford to go to my parents house kind of frequently i got a silver one for you and there's one person who has that era g in like traditional military green with perfectly clear untinted windows and no running boards and like the smallest wheels that fit on that body and it looks awesome and they always just have it covered in mud and it's so like that sounds so sexy i yeah every time i drive past i'm like i should stop and ask if they want to sell it I would can I send you a try. message on here? You can definitely send a chat. Yeah, there's a chat window down there. So yeah. while we're talking about your hopes and dreams, uh, how's the so Bronco? Yes, I also looked at a WRX. I looked at a, a Toyota 84. <clears throat> I've looked at pickup trucks of all kinds. Um, uh, I, I, I'm all over the board. I, 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 I have a problem. Just buy a weird Toyota 4x4 and stop thinking. You mean sold one. the one he already owned? <laughs> no, there's plenty of <laughs> other weird Toyota 4x4s. You know what I'm really thinking about? Oh my gosh, now I want to know. Okay. All right, all right. How would I know? Porsche Macan S. A Macan? You can yes. get a good one for like 35. For it, and you can easily fit a, a 30 inch all terrain tires on, on 18. You can. And it looks really cool. If you Google McCann Safari, you'll get a, a few cool. Uh, yeah, you can get you can get a real McCann's, good McCann's. You can have for about twenty grand. Thirty five, you can get a great McCann S. The only problem is the early, hold on, like hold the on. first. You're thinking you're thinking Cayenne. McCann is no, a smaller guy. I'm saying. Did you say Cayenne? No, he I said, said no. McCann, yeah, no, like said, the I said, small I said, one. I said yeah, I said McCann. McCann, 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 McCann whatever it is. How are you going to fit a thirty five inch tire in the McCann? Who said thirty five? You just did. No, I didn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. Best show ever. I can't ever. fit thirty five on my <laughs> fucking well, GX I, I Parado. Thirty five. Right. You said thirty five. Some wasn't. He said um, thirty. He said thirties. A thirty one on the Macan would be awesome. It would be less awful than what Chris is showing. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> that's what came up. I was going to say the first few years of the Macan that you're probably looking at just most, if not all of them have sunroofs and the sunroofs leak. Just be wary of that. Somehow I feel that's the least of the time. That looks awesome. That yes, is something like that. Dude, that is like if you want a golf R and you want it to be a rally car, yeah. just get that. It's like so, a um it's like a GLA forty five, but without the Mercedes fuckery. Reason seventy five why I sold the Prado, it was a bit slow on the okay. it. It made it up some hills. But it was you gotta slow. remember Camille is like nineties Honda hair on fire guy, like And also driving around a city where like everybody jokes that or says, yo, you don't need a car to be fast in the city because you're just going stoplight, stoplight. But if you're trying you to merge to in a city or like... You need to be quick, yeah. From stoplight to stoplight, yeah. So I, I gave up. I wasn't even trying with that thing. It's just like, yeah. cut me off. You're just going to do it. Uh, but I do miss that a little bit of zippiness. And I just I just had a Mazda CX-30. And that was a very cool zippy car. Uh, but I couldn't live with that. They're okay. Would you have the turbo or the... Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the turbo in that is actually pretty good. It's pretty sweet. I didn't I didn't love the car overall. The CX-30 um, is a stopgap between what was the CX-3 and what is now the CX-50. Except the CX-50 is significantly a better vehicle in every measurable way. Oh, it, 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 it's 7500 bucks more in every capacity, but it's 10 grand more worth of car. Yeah. CX-50 is nice. Every Mazda, though, the, the, the infotainment system just pisses me off. Oh, my God. 
My wife has a CX five. She's on her second CX five. This is a uh, this is a new fun thing. We've had almost no problems with these cars over the last six years, five years. But the info the infotainment is terrible, and CarPlay is perpetually. Here is what you can do: if you're listening to the radio, which five percent of us still do, and you have the car Apple CarPlay display in the car. You literally cannot change the radio station. In a, in a CX-5? Uh, in a modern car? Yes. I can't yes. say that. You I have to get out to of the that. CarPlay screen and go into the, to the uh, Mazda, what do they call it? Uh, inter- MMI. Entertainment section, and only then you can change the radio station. Hmm. So uh, I can't do that in the Suburban either. If I So if I'm in CarPlay or Android Auto, I have to hit the radio button to then change the AM, FM to what even I want to listen to. Steering wheel controls? Even with the steering wheel controls. Even I think these are like button? very mutually exclusive things. I, I don't know that I have a seek button. I don't know that I use it. <laughs> seek. So I'm, I'm a big fan of, of satellite radio. So right. I have, I have like super ADHD. So, so I like channel surfing all the time. And, and I just, I don't stay on, on one song for more than 30 seconds. Wow. Um, oh, God. I, I, I am fortunate to only have spent time with you as a, a oh, you've uh, seen pedestrian yeah. then. Yeah. It, it, you so I guess there it. are switches there. I mean, I should probably share my screen, to, but nobody's going to care because there are like can, switches can to see? go like left and right, which might change mm-hmm. the station if I was in Apple CarPlay. I just don't. Um, More often than not, I listen to podcasts or audiobooks. So. My wife's CS5 now my, is. My, um, those were- forward your song which you can't do on the radio but you can reverse in some stations on satellite okay you're not changing the channel oh i yeah now i know you're showing that yeah um anyways my wife cx5 for the first time is now having this problem where it always thinks that there's somebody in the passenger seat if they don't have their seat belt on yes this one and other Mazdas I have it. So I I, I drove. It does it in the back too because my, uh, my my son's kid was sitting in the back. I'm not doing it in the back. Sat in the left build. seat, and the car the Mazda was thinking that he's in the middle seat, so he had to buckle the the seat belt of the middle yeah. seat and of the right seat. She just drives around with the the passenger seat buckled now. Oh my gosh! It, it's I've never had this problem before. But so, so in a different Mazda that I had. My daughter was in the, in the passenger seat. I stopped to, to drop her off. I didn't put it into, into park. Mm. I just stopped. She got out, unbuckled, got out, and closed the door, and it was beeping the whole time <laughs> because it, it thought it was still there. Yeah. And that, that is I'm something sure the like Japanese – Dude, the Japanese company anti-seatbelt things last forever. The suburban things a total of five times if they think a seat like if if we pull away from the house, my wife hasn't had a chance to put her seatbelt on yet, and we get to the stop side of the other street and she hasn't got on yet. The suburban will ding only five times and stop. Where the Sequoia will go literally for like ninety seconds yeah. at a pace, yeah. increase the pace. Like, I get it. <laughs> and some of them will shout off your radio too. Oh yeah! Seriously, it'll like, <laughs> lo- it'll like progressively lower the vo- supers will lower the volume yeah. until or like you know basically force you so much for freedom, you know. Dude, I've reached the age where I'm doing that on my own anyway. I can't see. Let me turn down the radio, like all the time, all the time. Sorry, Ross, it's coming. Uh I've been doing Sorry. that since I was like seventeen. So, Camille, how's the Bronco? <laughs> the Bronco's great. Um, no update. You know what's really great about the Bronco is I, this is my second brand new car in my life, and I don't buy new new cars because my dealership experience sucks so much. But I ordered this car from a small local dealership, not like a chain. They have a Mazda, Lincoln, and and uh, and, mm-hmm. and a Ford. Uh, the owner is in every day, and these guys have been like super nice. Uh, Century Ford in, in outside of Boston. I'm going to give them a plug for the you know, five listeners mm-hmm. that they have. Um, but every kind of warranty issue that I had, they took care of right away. Um, I mm-hmm. had an issue, for instance, with the transfer case. I just got a check engine light on. Really? 
um, because I get the quote-unquote advanced transfer case, which allows you to have the auto four-wheel drive that we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, because I want my wife to drive in all-wheel drive when possible. Right. In, in a foul. Right. I don't expect it. And then, you know, it gets harder to do. To, if you're in four-wheel drive loads, get harder, harder to turn and everything. You know what I mean? So this was a, a better family thing. But it threw a check engine light on me when I was going down a steep, snowy hill in four-wheel drive low. Um, and I went back to the dealer twice for it. And what I'm scared of is they fixed it with a software upgrade. Uh -oh. And I'm like, how the hell am I going to fix that 10 years from now? But other than that, my, my soft tap came, uh, it's like a three layer soft tap and it started coming apart. Is it the they, standard soft top or the pre, like the upgrade one? It's, it's a standard soft top. Okay. There, there was only one soft top. Oh, really? Uh, I'm thinking of Jeep. Never mind. Scratch that. Yes. Yes. You're thinking of the Wrangler. Jeep which does the, Wrang pre the new Wranglers only have one soft top. Yeah. Um, but it started delaminating. Uh, they're like, we got a, we got a new, they, they're giving me a whole new assembly for the soft top. Which is amazing. Um, they took care. Of, I have a sw window switch issue where there's like a rubber tip in the end, and they're like, yep, here's your. They're really cool about it. They're, they're mm -hmm. not complaining about it. But about anything. did you have an existing relationship with this dealer? Nope. Okay. You just went in and. I just I ordered online on the on the second day that that it became available. Oh, yeah. Remember I mean, on the first day that the pre order website crashed? It was inaccessible. Yes. So so I did it the next day in the morning. And then uh no, I just uh yeah, this is it. This is this is how it's done. How many issues have you had that have had to be addressed? The transfer case and the soft tap oh oh the the Two. back windows. Back they window. have little snaps on them when you go to remove them mm -hmm. and they were just breaking away. Fairly fairly common uh, issue. What else on the on the Broncos? That's it. That's it. No, there should try. What did, was was there something else? I feel like there was, but I soft tap transfer case. Uh, front license plate placement. You the last time you were on that was oh, a big God. deal. Which is why when Ross asked you if Massachusetts needed a front plate, I was like, dude, he, we spent like thirty minutes on this last time. <laughs> so, so the front license plate in the factory Bronco, if you can find a picture, is in the middle on top of the bumper. If you go back to a picture of mine, I got a really cool bracket that puts it to to the to the bottom right, and it looks almost factory. I but it's only on the module bumper. But if I want fog lights, I can't use it with fog lights. I Not took I my Canadian license plate and bent it so that it fits around my bumper. I think allegedly, it looks not allegedly. It happened by itself. That it, it, I don't know what's going to happen. It's <laughs> fully displayed as it should be. Good God, that was fucking terrible. And then for the people no, listening, go, go. Um, imagine the license plate on the Bronco is immediately the below the middle of Bronco <laughs> instead of and immediately below the worse. front bumper. To mount this, they have to drill your bumper. And th in this picture, that's the steel... Uh, you know, a multi-piece bumper mm -hmm. with the end caps. Get so drill into that? Well, that's, that's awful. Procedure. So the first thing I told them at the dealership is do not drill my bumper. Yeah. And zip tie the license plate for the purposes of, of the inspection. They did that. And then I got a really cool bumper. I'm sorry, I got a really cool bracket for the for the bumper. And I, I don't see, I haven't, I can't say that I've seen another one like mine. Hmm. Uh, yeah, front plates cool. are a weird thing because... I'm slow. <laughs> It's so easy to obsess yeah. over the front plate stuff. But, like, in the grand scheme of life, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I spent days, if not months, trying to figure out how I was going to mount my front plate on the Lexus. And so, when you do, like, you know, forest from the trees kind of bird's eye perspective, it's like, it doesn't so originally I was going to be like, well, if I get pulled over for having no front license plates, a fifty dollar ticket or something like this, I'll just eat it up. However, in Massachusetts, they actually, for reasons I don't understand, qualify it as some kind of a moving violation almost, where you get not an insurance for it. Good God, really? Yeah. I mean, I mean, actually, yeah. 
It'll be points next time. However, we have we have no red light cameras, so I'll take that. For now. For now. They're actually mm. really I don't think well, myself sleep. So. We have like three in the metro area and people are like they're giant warnings that it's photo and force, but they've never <laughs> moved beyond those three. We're in testing. It's important, yes. Yeah, we're in the we're in the testing phase. I guess that's the good the good perk of driving press cars. <laughs> nope, they are going to send those tickets back to you. Yeah, I know. Yep. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, you could you could probably see your face in the picture. There's <laughs> Russ driving in ZX2. Hey, yeah, <laughs> me and a, a Chevy Trailblazer are us. Um, Is yeah. that the blue one? The Trailblazer. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, the one I sent and okay, yeah. Um, three cylinder engines sound better than six cylinder engines. I will say, sounds like a bike. We'll we, we'll talk about this at a uh, at a different at a show later, later <laughs> point. I, um, I sent you in a message to link to the, to the uh, G five hundred. Oh. I was talking about. There it is. Please, please show. Coming back in Facebook. Um, yeah, I'm sending you all over social media today. List of things to talk about. Did this... uh, so on, what the are only you, thing what are you... I I remember about these things is I can't. It's got to be a Lieberman video, but he was talking about like the length of kilometers of wiring in them. Yes. Oh, and yeah. It's like I doubt it. But that's not the era of Mercedes that was doing like this. Is a a few years post biodegradable wiring, so that should be reasonably okay. My my favorite things about these is I, I had a local guy who had one, but the frame was like from 1994, and the bottom was like, or the body was this era, and he yeah, just like they're Legos. I mean, they're mashed very, together. Very so, expensive. A couple of years ago, I did the uh, review of, uh, of the G63 here on Hooniverse. And it was the worst driving car ever. It even made me hate the damn thing. So what they did is they took a military vehicle with a full-size frame, put, you know, 600 horsepower into it, and 22-inch wheels. And it was understeering going straight just at every single curve you can imagine it was oh my that gosh scary taking a curve in, in that thing i don't know how people drive yeah this one is not perfect is it sad that the subwoofer gives me more concern than anything else <laughs> I, I asked him about that he said it was it was it's a quality professional installation which i'm kind of cringe, cringy upon. Uh, i'm gonna go look at it with an open mind but, <laughs> I think I'm gonna. Pass I on. love it. <laughs> I'm gonna look at it with an open mind, says the guy who is going to go in with utmost skepticism, or at least I fucking hope that you will. Uh, yeah, I drove. I drove a 2021. You're not being very supportive. Nah, I was like, I I will support Camille's bad decision here. Oh, same. Thank you. Same as the. Uh, you can only learn from me. As the closest Hooniverse representative to Camille. Um, should think because this is what it could become absolutely Ross. terribly. I, I, uh, I hold myself liable to be you party. Don't, you don't even need a lift to get to put that on. Looks awesome. So this was at one of my kids' oh, like flag football games in the parent God. parking lot. That's like a, a like an LR three or an LR four with like the air suspension at the top or like a lift and. Good tires. They look so good. Talk so about Ron's I truck. Read, I read up on the engine. The engine is the M113 engine. Okay. Three valves and two spark plugs per cylinder. Two plug. Uh, Three valves and two spark plugs per cylinder. Yeah. So it's got 16 spark plugs. Uh, <clears throat> issues with it are. Uh, Timing change sometimes gets uh, loose, so you have to. Uh, it's not the guy jumps a tooth or loses a tooth. Neither, it just gets loose. <laughs> it just like shit. Not a belt, the chain it's, gets it's, loose. It's a, it's a tensioner. 
Well, timing chains are, are, are a huge problem on many German cars. Um, yes. A whole lot. Hello, they can never get V8, S, and RS4. Actually, no, the RS4, um, they unfuck that. But... But other than that, they have a, a transmission issue that's easily... It, it's it's a repair that becomes almost routine, like every 80,000 miles or so. There's a <clears> transmission <throat> control module inside the transmission. It's like $200 to replace it. You get to drop the pan. Um, there isn't, other than the stupid electronic stuff, there isn't that much to them. Huh. So I'm, I'm dangerously like optimistic about it. I'm rooting for you. Where is it located? It's, it's right. Boston. In Boston. In Boston. It, it's right in your fan way. It's, it's, so. it's downtown even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the guy, the guy doesn't drive it. He's got another car. Um, well, I'm here for you. You're here for my emotional support. Can you can you support me financially with my bad decision? I can't support you financially, <laughs> and I also can't promise any kind of immediate uh, vehicular response. Should assistance go poorly, <laughs> but. I mean, it's the shortest video ever. He just steps behind it. Yeah, the the the, the, guy, the guy is super nice. He seems he seems straight up. Uh, it just I don't feel like it's, it's been just well maintained. And it had like four previous owners for twenty it, years. That's wheels. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah, wheels are easy to break. Eleven thirteen. That's worse than uh, that's a, that's like Sequoia. So reason number seventy six why I sold the uh, Land Cruiser. That's pretty much what it was getting. Twelve to thirteen. Yeah, but you know, I mean, if I wanted a, a fuel efficient car, I have a press car right now. It's a Corolla hybrid all wheel drive. How nice. is that? It's. It could have. Put a little bit more effort into it, and it'll be so much better. First of all, it's loud, and that noise—it it doesn't have enough sound deadening to make it lighter okay. and cheaper, obviously. But, but loud compared to hybrid. what? Like twenty years ago, compared to yes, the same car twenty years right. ago, it would be. This is. It's, it's loud compared to the Mazda CX-30. How about that? Okay, those but are then surprisingly well. NVH. You're not making my point. Okay. Just go go with me here. Okay? <laughs> the other problem is you've got the, the ice engine starting and going. Here's on the highway, that engine keeps turning on and off almost constantly. And it go when it turns on, it must have like a really light flywheel on it because it zooms up right away to like two, three thousand RPMs on mm-hmm. the highway. Um and and you feel it go on and off constantly. It has a technometer for reasons the hell knows. One thing that thing doesn't need is a technometer. Um, so I'm a little bit disappointed with the system overall. Um, it's interesting because... Other than that, it's a great car. So the, the ice powers the front wheels, the electric motors power with the rear wheels, like mm-hmm. on the RAV4. Uh, pretty clever design. Um, great miles per gallon, but it's... It, 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 I, I'm not in love with it. Did you ask for this one or did they just give it to you? Yeah, they just gave it to you. You should follow up and try to get a um a new Prius to see how it compares because the I haven't driven either, but from the people that I talk to, uh it, it sounds like the refinements have really been like not that anybody ever complained about severe or extreme harshness you know, from that powertrain, or at least from the front-wheel drive powertrain version of it. Um, but in the in the new Prius, supposedly, it is a so, new ball game. I think they uh, they elevated the Prius. They made this, which is a Corolla, which is a yeah, yeah. entry-level hybrid. Mm-hmm. And it makes total sense. Um, I also think it's a little bit bigger than the Prius. Uh, but this reminded me how much I begin not to like cars, because I feel so damn cramped in it. And and showing my age to get in and out of it is like a damn chore. Preaching to the choir here, dude. It's like everybody's like, why do people buy SUVs? SUVs suck. Yeah, but they're comfortable. Yeah. 
getting into the new Colorado is not the easiest thing, I will say. Especially you with the established that, that you're short. I am short, and that it's not a good <laughs> like my brother was like he's taller than me. He was like, Oh, this is no bueno. But yeah, the Corolla's not the Corolla is so there's a new Camry, but it's a revised version of the existing Camry. The Corolla, they're gonna they're gonna do the same thing with it. Like they're just gonna overhaul it and you know press the, print. The, 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 the Corolla is relatively new. I think it's been out for like two years and it's gone. Back and it's gone. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Time's flying, but you know what's shocking me is that Ford already facelifted the F one hundred and fifty. Which I feel was just introduced like a yeah. year or two ago. Like last year. They they literally went F-150 Super Duties and now they're back to F-150. They'll go right back to the Super Duty. Like, yeah. 2018 well, I mean, for the current Corolla. But there's been a lot of updates to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. The only, I so, mean, yes. I, I've only paid attention to the GR and the XSE hatch with the stick. Which I would love to daily. If I ever end up I with like a long commute like again, that's top. I like the hatch. It has like a 180 horsepower. It's like a, it's like an Integra did in the 90s. It's like with the power normal, you know, pedestrian cars supposed to have. We don't need more than that. But I didn't say that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's one thing I'm looking for in my next car is a V8 engine. Everything I look at except for the cars that don't have it, have a V8 in. Do you want a 2018 GX460? I can't afford your GX460. I would love yeah. it. Oh, you saw the one I was bidding on. on, on um, I did. That was such a great buy. The guy got it for 20500 The thing had $30,000 of new work and mods yeah. on it. Yes, it had almost 200,000 miles on it. There it was one owner, garage kept, super clean, never off-road, with... Thirty thousand dollars worth of crap added onto it. I got a story behind it. All right, this is gonna blow your mind. All right, you ready for this? Hit us. I was bidding against against another guy on it. Three days later, we go by. I get a call on WhatsApp, which nobody ever gets a call on WhatsApp, right? You have WhatsApp? I don't. Yeah, everybody has WhatsApp except you. Okay? Yes, so I do. Let, let's move on. I get Ooh, a call. On what wheel? Chris, call on can you punch in? I just want to see what wheels those are. I'm, I'm... Considering things. Can I finish my story? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes. The guy who won this car calls me up. He's like, hey, what do you think about that Lexus? I'm like, hey, I think it's really good. Because my friend told me that it has 200,000 miles on it, and it's all rusted, and, and it's, and it's going to fall apart, and that I'm just buying a whole bunch of parts on it and got to put it into a different car. What? Uh, what? Yes. I'm, wait, 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 wait. So I'm like, all right, my man, what are you from? I live in Phoenix. I'm like, all right, that explains. It tells a lot of this stories right like there. Virginia. This car was like in Virginia and Maryland. So apparently, this is rusted to these people. And I'm <laughs> it's like, like, it's super clean. <laughs> I'm like, no, dude. This is how they look brand new on a dealer lot. Toyota's rusted. They're exposed to air. My five year old truck looked like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, no, rust isn't your issue. Uh, and I'm like, yes, it has two hundred thousand miles on it. But it's got a history of having oil change, transmission fluid change, differential change. Owner cared. That other the shit. owner gave many shits. Yes. And the owner didn't modify it. The story was that it was his wife's car, always garage kept, all highway miles. Because how do you put on 200,000 miles on the car in, in a matter of six years? You only drive it there and, somewhere, there and back, right? Um, and then Major. they sold the business that it was under or something like that. And he's like, he came into some extra money, so he was going to have fun with it. So he spent literally. At the, there's a, a, a invoice at the end of the pictures that has, that says it's like, sums, sums it crazy up for thirty thousand dollars. Fucking done crazy. within a year ago, and I regret not buying this thing. I mean, even the there's all high end stuff like the ARB double compressor. Uh, th there's mm. no cheap stuff in here. The suspension is is all legit with the control arms. Is it Dobbinson's like or was it? On, on, huh? Was it was Dobbinson's suspension on that? If I I don't remember, but I remember it, it yeah. being really. I mean, good the, stuff. the thing about the off road world, and, and I mean, it. it... Wait, hold on. I didn't finish my story. Sorry. So the guy calls me up. So, so the guy calls me up, and, and, and he's like, well, because I'm really nervous. So I'm like, listen, go check it out. 
if if you don't like it, give me a call and and we can talk about it or have the owner call me. Because at, at that point, I was like, no, I really want it. I could have talked this guy out of it. I know I could have. It even had, you know, what else it had? It had an extended range fuel tank. When Long was range the America. Last time you ever seen? Huh? Long range when America. When you ever see anyone do this? The guy went to the off road place and be like, do everything and just wrote them a check. All right. I could buy so a Land this, Cruiser, so this, but instead I'm going to put my money into the vehicle I own. And it's a great vehicle. I, I, I mean, you know. Um, anyway, so this guy was like doubting himself. No, I'm like, no, no, no. It's really good. Go, go buy it. Turns out that the owner was super nice guy. The car is in super condition. He even filled up that extended range fuel tank for him for his for his drive. And the owner, because because I told him, I'm like, what are you going to be doing with it? He's like, well, I bought some land in Costa Rica, and I want to take this. Uh, uh, I've been shopping around for a while, and I'm going to drive this to Costa Rica and live from a tent on the roof on it. That's and I'm fucking like, awesome. There's only one problem with this. You've got a shiny Lexus in South America. I'm like, just do something to make it not stand out as much. By the time he gets um, down there, it won't be a shiny. Right. Uh, but so so I, I've been talking to the new buyer, and, and he, he loves it. He loved it right Camille away. Camille so hard. It's a seller big old to be a really nice guy. There he is. He's and, back. Yeah, he's back. Yeah. So the I fun part will be much. in the actual show. Camille won't freeze because he's uploading his own shit. And so Chris and I'll just, just be like, "We're gonna look like jerks talking to Camille while he's making a point." No, frozen Camille. <laughs> but well, um, we welcome re- you to the GX community you. whenever it is time that you would like to become one of us. I just sold the GX, except it was better than yours. It was a predecessor to yours. <sighs> the Prado. <laughs> it, it, was, it was so great that you got rid of it after a year. But Oh, so let's talk about this, because you guys wanted to talk about the new Land Cruiser. And, and the, I don't have the time right now, but I was going to write an article of how the first generation Prado and the current upcoming Land Cruiser are exactly the same car, and Toyota hasn't done jack shit to them. Let me explain to you. All right? Uh, yes. Oh, hold on. Say that. Wait. They're the same car. Okay. Let me break it down for you. The new Land Cruiser that's coming up is exactly the same as the Toyota Prado. It's like a Porsche 911. They never really changed, but it's all new. All right. Follow me here. Okay. Prado. Two seats in the front, three seats in the middle, two seats in the back, seven passenger. Land Cruiser. Two, three, five. Well, you're with me so far, right? Yeah. Engine. Prado. 3.4 liter V6, 90 degrees apart. New Land Cruiser, 3.4 liter V6, 90 degrees apart. Yes, it has two turbochargers on it, whatever. Okay? You're still with me, right? Transmission, it's a yes, 90 this degree V6? Eight. Okay. This one has eight speeds. This one has four, but you understand the theory. You get to the four-wheel drive system now. The same full-time four-wheel drive system, locking center differential, uh, four high, four low. Lock, lock and rear diff if high. you want it to be locked. Limited slip diff if you want it to. The same goddamn thing. The tailgate opens differently now. Big whoop. But the philosophy opens ways is the same. And I, and I guarantee you that if you go to like the third generation Forerunner, you go to the Prado, and then you go to that new Land Cruiser, you go, it's like driving a CJ7 and driving a Wrangler. There's going to be a lot of similarities there. Say yes. <laughs> I'm not going to say no. Uh, the philosophy, isn't... the Toyota does not change their philosophy when it comes to that. So, is it the Land Cruiser a hybrid system, though? No, it's a uh, no, it's a turbo no, four, it's a, it's a and then V6 on, it's a twin turbo V6 on a Lexus, right? The so Lexus is a Land twin Cruiser turbo V6, a... but then there's also the hybrid Max. I thought that was the LC250 was getting the hybrid, which was the turbo four. I think you can get the turbo four. IMAX, and then we're professionals. We should really know. This. We should know this. <laughs> I, Some of us only moonlight in this category. Sorry. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I, so, Camille, what do you make of the relationship between the, 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 same thing the 250 the and the 550, the GX 550? Because these are the, the relationship in the standard Toyota practice. When you had the GX, like yours, you had a V8 engine. When you go to the Toyota, you have the same thing, but you had a V6 engine. So there's always those two differences in powertrains. Other than that, the Lexus is just going to be nicer. It's going to have a different tailgate. But 
how do you, what do you interpret of the changing brand positioning? Because GX and Land Cruiser were never two and the same in America. Yes. And the problem is that the fifth generation Forerunner really became the Land Cruiser. Both well, almost in terms of size. If you especially I if you go to the like that Navy series. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> the the Land Cruiser grew to be a little bit too big and certainly most like more expensive and it just wasn't selling well. They needed to bring it back down where it was within reach mm-hmm. because then you had the confusion of the uh, ton- not Tundra, the Sequoia and the Land Cruiser. Like, why do you have the same two cars, basically? So they needed to separate that gap first. Okay? They're backtracking. They are. And this is why they have. there's a two-year gap because they couldn't introduce it right after killing the big uh, Land Cruiser 200 yeah. because then you would have a price issue. You would have a lot of right. new owners who are pissed off. It just wasn't working. Which, and it's also the same reason why they're not bringing the 300 Land Cruiser here. Because then you're sabotaging yourself and you're killing your Lexus product. And they've remediated that by putting the Land Cruiser, the non-domestic Land Cruiser on the 300 chassis and offering it here as the Sequoia and the LX. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why we still get the LX, because there is no Lexus Sequoia. Right. But the Sequoia is uh, it's the TX for most people. Now, the, que- the real question is, what's going to happen to the Forerunner? And I think I know the answer, but I'm probably wrong. Oh, God. I, I, hope we're, I, I hope the general public is wrong in terms of what they think the Forerunner will be. I think, what do you think is going to happen? Here's what I want to happen. But Toyota is so goddamn conservative and, 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 and just cautious and careful. I want the next Forerunner to go back to the first generation Forerunner and have a removable top. Yep, manual, removable top. Bronco Ryan. Two doors. And then you're across all fields. I don't think the Toyota, Toyota has the guts to do that. I think they're more likely to do a... And they've shown, quote unquote, shown there have been silhouette teasers of another FJ esque vehicle. Um, that was during the electrification announcement. Yeah. No, the the two hundred and fifty, the Land Cruiser launch. There was, yeah. you know, like uh, it's, I don't, I don't think they're going to come up with that with a model that has a removable top. No chance. If you, if you look at the Bronco, if you look at the the, um, the Jeep Wrangler too, uh, the tops are one of the most problematic things for, for, for both of those companies. Um, Toyota doesn't like their problem. Yeah, and that's also why Jeep sells a buttload of the power soft tops. The power, the one touch, whatever. The one is. touch power top? Yeah. yeah. I, 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 draw, I spend a lot of time with that because I have a good friend who let me borrow one. I had it in the winter. The problem with the one touch power tap is in the summer, you can't really take the tap off. And in the winter, you don't really have the, 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 the hard tap. You don't have the quietness. You have a lot of wind noise coming the through. The insulation. Yeah. Yes. So um, I like the idea. My mom has the Wrangler with the power tap because I told her to get it. But after spending some time with it, I, I'm really. You're like, sorry, mom. The keys. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and she's in Jersey, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. To get both both the hard top with the liner and a soft top, and then go to your <laughs> semi annual hard top to soft top. Switch. Right. Toyota is like doing a Jeep Wrangler. Toyota is not going to, and probably never will again play that game of of multiple top Listen, we also options. Said that they weren't going to bring back the Supra. Yeah, well, but they, they didn't. But that's, BMW released a Z whatever. Outsourced. But that's yeah. okay. That's but that's it. It's possible. I, I I don't think there will be a a soft top Toyota product again in the next. Maybe, maybe, maybe they can come up with something interesting. Look at here's where Ford screwed up with the Bronco. You know what Ford should have done, and they only did it because they didn't put a straight tire on the tailgate. Jeep's biggest problem is the soft top, where the the window flipping up on zippers mm-hmm. just sucks. Ford solved that, but you can actually lift the whole back end of a of a. Of the you just set up a mousetrap? What imagine, was that? Huh? 
I hit my printer. <laughs> because I'm excited. It sounded like, okay, you, like you touched a mousetrap or something. Like, oh, shit. No. A printer. All right. Imagine now. Imagine. Let's say you have a Jeep Wrangler or a Bronco, whatever. And the back window rolls down into the tailgate like it does on, a, on the forerunner. But then you have a soft top, too. Ooh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Toyota did this in like the 60, 50 or 60 generation Land Cruiser mm-hmm. that had a hard top, but the rear back doors were split. So you could take the hard top off and you have the windows. You have to physically remove mm-hmm. the windows from it. But imagine that window rolling down into the tailgate like the second or first gen, like the first generation forerunner. That would solve a lot of problems. And then you have a flip down tailgate. That's one of the biggest complaints. And I mean, well, I just sold it for everybody. I want my goddamn money. All right. <laughs> yeah. You're a future uh, product planner. But for, so Ford had a choice. They could have done that, but you can't do that and put a spare tire on. You would need to have a separate tire carrier because then your, your, your door doesn't become strong enough. So then you would have to open the tire carrier and then lower the top. But if you can put a tire under the, the like, like Forerunner has it now, and like the Lexus and, and the Land Cruiser have, you can have that tailgate with a drop window and you can make that a soft. I miss the uh, the roll down rear window. Severely. Yeah, you don't have that on the Lexus. Sequoia no. has it. I don't know if the new one does, so but does mine does. So does the Tundra. Do you get is... a lot of like exhaust fumes from it? From the... Roll down, the highway, window? The roll down window. I've never had had. I, I, I smelled a lot of exhaust. I've, I've had some come out. Like I've had some where I've been like, mm, I got to roll the window up, wind or, or whatever. You, you know how to? You know why yours didn't have that exhaust smell? My forerunner was a two, 2010. The exhaust would come out to the side. Really? No, it would come out back. Like it would come out to the back. Yours, the newer one, would turn to left, side. like turn to the passenger side. That was a change, yes. Your 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 exhaust bent to the to the to the passenger side, but the first ones came out straight back, and that exhaust would come back inside. Well, uh, I'm gonna have to think thing. about this because one of my forerunners kind of didn't have an exhaust. Yeah, the white one. I have two images. Let me open real fast. The perfect, the perfect. Of course, the second one's tiny. vehicle yeah, has really has a roll down rear window and a simultaneously also removable full hard dot roof section. Have you seen the Ford Bronco from the nineties? Yeah, and the K five Blazer. There you go. There's your car, and it's got a straight tire in the. Yeah. Back. Yeah. So yeah. Re- rear. Yes. And then there's some side. that have the exhaust coming to the side. There you go. Mm-hmm. Same generation. And those uh those third window packs are fucking stupid. Toyota also removed the uh my had an antenna in the front fender, they removed that later on. For a fin? No, 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 in the front fender for AM FM. Mm. Right, right. But then they replace it with a fin up top. You said yeah, when they removed it. They embedded yeah. it in one of the windows. Because mine had a fin for satellite. I think they've integrated that all into one unit now. I don't know. But the Sequoia definitely has it in a window too. Yeah. Because there's no Mark, there's no radio antenna. I, I don't think you can put an AM FM into a fin. I don't I'm trying to think about where it is in the suburban. Uh... I'm I'm running out of Steam. brain on this. We've been yapping for almost two hours. <laughs> it's it's a long really? episode. Yeah, uh, we're oh, one thirty already. Always, yeah, we're coming up on eleven o'clock. Um, yeah, my my brother has a fifth gen forerunner. I'll I'll have to ask him. He um, it asked the important question. Where's your antenna? <laughs> hey, Spen. You know the Prado had pop out windows. That the four, I wish the four on did. So when I googled suburban AM FM antenna, all that comes up is my fin that I have right above the the cab of the truck. That white, I've got a white sharp fin right on the front we of it. Home, we have a homework assignment for you. 
go find out where your antenna is. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely late because my Googling sucks now. Mm. I can't even find stuff anymore. It's definitely late so, because I'm spiraling the Bron- the Bron- on jokes that I can't the Bron- say. Is great. The, the Prado, I loved it, but I didn't like it. It's gone. I, I'm looking at replacement for literally everything. I have no idea what I'm going to get. G-Wag. Um, G-Wag. 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 I don't think so. What about a 470? I'm, I'm open to it. It's, it's, in, it's in my top five, but it's like it's kind of the same thing. It's, it's so a fourth gen like four iron. Yeah. Really fast. Top, you, you do mention top five. GX. Dude, you have a whole spreadsheet. I don't know where it is. Well, you just said top five. <laughs> I just I figured it was five. <laughs> so, Grand Cherokee V8. I know Ross is not a fan of it. Post one for. Do you call? I will give you my dad's phone number. You can talk to him. Just, yes, I, I know. I know. I know. Wait, hold on, real fast. Your Ford dealer. What were the other brands they had? It wasn't cheap, was it? Mazda, Mazda and Lincoln. Okay, so yeah, not cheap. I, I wouldn't buy it from a dealer. Um, I had no choice on buying a new car. Right. Um, I got I got the I got the GX in there. I I looked at a Lexus, both the LX and the GX. I'm open minded to both of them. I stopped looking at Land Cruisers because people selling Land Cruisers are an obvious crack. Yes. And they just think that they have three hundred thousand miles on them and they're brand new cars. No, they're not. Um. Uh, I'm considering at least on a WRX because they're super cheap. Hey, our, um, WRX leases are shockingly cheap. Yes. Because nobody um, likes the way they look, so nobody's buying them. So the these rates are good. Regardless, they, and they're so much better than the previous. Generation. How far are you willing to go to get something? Depends on the car. I have flex, I have flexibility in time because my, I actually have a car. I have two cars. I didn't mention the other really? car that I have. My mom gave my daughter a 2006 Acura MDX with only seven. Oh, you miles. did tell me that. Perfect. I don't know if you told. Us about Perfect. that. You definitely told me about that. You said 2006. Yes. yes. Is that my sister still driving my mom's? That's like yeah. It's, it, go 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 into my my Instagram again. You will see that I polished the headlights to remove the haze. Yeah, I that's, installed uh, a radio with the CarPlay into those it. Those are great um, cars. No, it's it, it wasn't in as great as condition as my mom told me it would be. Her well, husband didn't in understand. general, they're great cars. I'm not saying the specific one that your daughter is now driving yeah, is. This one, there, there's paint peeling on it. It's a little too rusty. It's your first uh, car. She doesn't need it to be perfect. But I'm I'm having fun with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that took me about two. two you know something? To clear those headlights, it was a five-minute job. I literally went to like a parts store, got a headlight cleaner, and the goddamn thing worked like a miracle. Yeah, and yep. Well, I paid someone two hundred dollars to do it on one of my old cars. Yeah, but now everybody knows that it's just basically sandpaper oh. and like a nice, you know. This, this was just like liquid. Yeah, I was blown away. So I've been, I'm driving that. Although it's in my friend's shop right now because it kept throwing a check engine like <laughs> the EVAP systems on those things suck. Oh, yeah. oh god. Smoke test. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um but yeah, it's it's been pretty good so far. So I'm in no hurry, although I don't think I want to buy anything before the end of the year, because I have so much stuff going on. So I'm gonna start looking casually. I can I calculated this. I can travel anywhere in continental forty forty eight states. And be home if I fly out like Thursday night. I can be home by Sunday night from anywhere, as long as the car doesn't crap out. And that is shit. well, shit. I uh... but it's got to be a decent car. And I'm open to a lot of things. I, I just want We're... one thing the Land Cruiser taught me is that I want something interesting. Yeah, and that's something like that's why the Jeep is kind of like. Eh. Well, if uh, right. if you find something in a weird part of the country and the trek back passes through Connecticut, you buy my ticket and I'm you, your I'm your second driver. You live an hour away from me. I don't need to fly out to California and buy a car over there to go see you. Well it's a shame actually. But if you do find, find a car in California or fucking Oklahoma and you want to drive it back, tell me. Why are you gonna go come fly out with me and drive it back with me? Maybe. 
Dude, that's like that's like the car guy dream, isn't it? Fly in, buy it, and drive it home. Like I've done that nervous, with a car because then, then you're depending on on the jackass who had it before you. Yeah, that's uh, actually what he says it is. Also, but you have skills, have take tools, PTO you'll be okay. To, I have five days of PVO to burden between now and New Year's, so fucking find something. Yeah, but he said after the New Year, Ross, you're already screwed. I'm like, saying <laughs> <doing> now, so <laughs> I have like. I have like four weeks of PTO that I can't pick up. So don't, don't even get me started. Well, if if, <laughs> if miracles happen and it happens between now and New Year's, I, the, I have... the problem is I don't have the time that I can actually go and do this for, for all the reasons that I know you from yeah, Well, we'll, we'll yeah. do hand off. Chris can drive it the first and then hand it off to me. I'll drive it the next, and then you can drive it on. I mean, dumber things have happened. Yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> so confident all this, three of us have this done has legs. Things. If. If you see something cool for a reasonable amount of money, one thing I've learned between the Prado and this MDX is that I'm actually really handy. And yeah. I fix a lot of stuff. Like I worked as a mechanic for a few years, and I forgot that I have tools and that I know how to use them. <laughs> and it's just, and I, I actually have some skills that a lot of the new technicians don't, which is like troubleshooting shit. Yeah. And we have Google now. The, the like, electrical like, background brain? in your brain matters yeah. a lot. The, the fact that I you're also... I not anything electrical other than putting a radio in. The electrical engineer part of your pre-wired sensibility has... You Troubleshooting know, matters. Some yeah. kind of bearing on whether you can figure shit out or not. So... I, I'm, I'm actually surprised myself a few times. It's like, yeah, I can do this. It's like, remember that commercial... It was like a, a commercial for, for like uh, um, uh, erectile dysfunction, but it was like a fifty guy at work. It was like a fifty year old guy at work after hours. Wow, I do oh, not running some kind of a print company, and he was there after hours by himself, and the the print machine just stopped, and there was nobody else to fix it. So he went downstairs, he rolled up his sleeve, and he fixed it himself. And it's like, hey, it feels like you're 20 years old again. It's pretty much what I've discovered with myself about cars. This have to do that thing. Like two- that was just what the commercial that I was, Ross. Twenty years. Yeah. I opened my toolbox that I that I haven't touched in twenty years, and I'm like, God damn, this is nicely organized, man. That, that guy was who, who last touched it was he had his shit together. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> wow, we are really in the weeds now. I'll wrap it up real fast. <laughs> I, I think we can. I can count. You get when you've done a lot of shows. I could probably count on one hand the number of times we've talked about erectile dysfunction. I'm not mad to say that's that sentence. Yep. So rate and review wherever you listen to podcasts, like and subscribe on YouTube. Camille, do you want them to follow you anywhere? Because you're, I, I, I like done with social media. Yeah, I'm you're so good. Done. Good. Yeah, don't. It, it, it's, it's. Uh, uh, I'm gonna. I, I do want to write more. I, I'm in the middle of writing like four articles, and I can't get myself to finish every one of them. Chat GPT. Uh, it, it's, it's pathetic. Chat GPT. Um, Copy paste. Finish this just, for me. Just to at least get the backbone of it, and then you can actually put your spin on it. One of them is actually written. I just need to add pictures, and it's been a week, and I haven't <laughs> added those damn pictures. Uh, what's that? What's I that? Uh, what's that phrase? Uh, uh, perfection is the enemy of progress, or whatever that is. Something. Just do it. My next article. Okay. Just do it. Just, just to give you a tip, I'm using an OBD2 scanner on an 89 BMW E30 to scan its fault codes. How? I'll leave you with that. Ah, That's what the article's for, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mind blow. Uh, okay. It's a mind blow. Concerned. And it work. And mm-hmm. it, well, when you post it, I'll read it. Yeah. It, 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 it's going to go viral to like at least 20 yes. people. It, 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 that sounds about right for us. Yeah. yeah. That's about yep, the E30 that's our speed. in question has a virus. That's how it goes viral. It's that time of year, too. Everyone's got kids in school. We're all viral. Oh my God. I watched like three children when I was picking my daughter up today just be like sneezing on each other. Fuck. Oh, this is only the beginning. Uh, yeah, dude. You haven't even got the real school the magic yet. Magic word. Lice. <laughs> Lice? Lice? Yeah, like, lice? I just, is, I just, yeah. I just watched an episode of the league where they have lice. 
And your your kid has so much hair. Dude, she has she has more. She's eighteen months old. She has more hair now than I've ever had in my whole life combined. Dude, my, my all my kids were bald till they were like two, and your kid has more hair than all of them combined. My kid was sitting there trying to eat her dinner, going like this, brushing her yeah. hair out of her face, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Do I have, have I have I lost more hair up here? Dude, I'm, I'm 46. I'm like, you, this is my, the only thing I get going for me right you're now. 46. You're yeah. lucky you got that much. I I'll be happy if I if uh, if I have this much when I'm 34, which is just stop stressing. Yeah, stop. Tr- <laughs> if I'm 36 and I have the hair <laughs> above my 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 beard and my my mustache. <laughs> It'll be a happy day. I if you so, Russ. I don't know if you heard Camille. He told you to stop stressing. If you stop stressing, we wouldn't be able to communicate because that's literally all we communicate about. We, we the stress. You just bent to each other. We we talk about <laughs> the, for the last few months. We've been talking about uh, such and such cancels a show. Let's reschedule, and also our kids are causing the stress. What kind of stress? Oh, how much stress? Oh, it's that much stress? Oh, no, it's that much stress. You like, are you don't notice, but you're each other's therapist. Pretty and much. That's it's actually it's actually scary. Yeah, because it's, like, <laughs> it's cool for grown ass men to talk about mental health. Yeah, but I also but have a therapist should. that I see. But yes, so but I think us as middle aged men should really be more comfortable with the topic and address it at some point. He, Definitely, I agree with that, and I, 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 I think we should be all comfortable in our skins and comfortable with talking about how and insecure and right. fucked up we all feel and are. But um, then, but then we wouldn't be buying cars with big tires. But hold on, <laughs> you did something to me that I did to other people. It's like one day you texted me. It's like, are you okay? Because I haven't heard from you in a while, and that was super cool. Uh, and did I, really I did that. that. You did. Oh, I didn't well, do it. <laughs> I didn't have time. Hey, I mean, <laughs> hey, you know, check in on your homies. You got it, right? Yeah, I know everybody goes through shit and everybody's got, you know, tough shit. And I certainly got my shit and my friends all got their shit. So, you know, look after shit. your friends. A lot of shit. Look after yeah. your friends. That's a great place to stop because i still have to edit this to get this posted for tomorrow (laughs) yeah just just title the episode look after your friends